<laughs> yes. There you go. Happy, happy good morning, happy everybody. Happy Monday. Happy, happy Monday. <laughs> it's morning yes. somewhere. It is. Yeah, no, morning. I yeah, happy good someone morning. still keep saying happy good morning and happy Monday. Today's an awesome day. We're going to have so much fun. Yes, we're still under construction. That's right. I finally really did find, tell, but... I found furniture. Yeah, she did. So we have half the set done. The other half you can't see because it's horrendous. Do but... you remember months ago when we did the roll-in when I went shopping and looked for yes. couches and could not find... I had my heart set on a white couch because that's what we replaced. I really wanted one and found a couch wasn't white and the day we walked in the door to the sh to the showroom that couch was sitting right there i'm like lord thank you for answering Come that on. prayer even in the little things he answers every prayer and it's an incredible couch yeah. so we're Very still under construction almost done the christian fitness side is not done yet we're still working on that it will be so that's exciting but let me let me tell them what's coming up today huge show today yes. so stay tuned we have three great stories a lot of great stories great scripture <clears throat> but Today is Reformation Day. We're going to go into some details on what that is. We have some faith in the World Series, which is Come going on. on right now, and a good news story coming up about a praying coach. So a lot of sports today, but Love hey, that. that's what we Love do. It. Love that. Good news. That's what it's about. Absolutely. And just to remind you, Sunday is Daylight Savings Time. So This Sunday already? Yeah. We fall back? Yeah, we do. Or we don't, but we do. We fall back. <laughs> We, we fall do. back. Yeah, we do. I'm not saying are we falling down in our faith. I'm saying we got to turn the clocks back, which yes. no yes, one really, really has do. clocks to turn back. Um, yeah, your watch do. does it. Your phone yeah. does it automatically. True. So, yeah, But it wild. is daylight savings day, figure. savings time. So just remind, wow. remember that when you go to church that you need to get there on time because... And then, or go online and watch last year's show where I ranted for about five minutes about how I hate changing the times. But anyway, that, that, uh, I'm over I think, I think they're all voting to not that. do it anymore, though. Yeah, most of the states. Yes, Florida voted, but don't get me started. Okay. Yeah, it's, so, it I is a rant it. for him. <laughs> um, today today is Reformation Day. What on earth does that mean? About five years ago was the 500th year anniversary, so I did a special little promo. So watch this. This will explain it. This is from five years ago. October 31st, 2017 marks the 500 year celebration of the Reformation when Martin Luther nailed his 95 point thesis to the door of the church. This began a separation or reform from the Roman Catholic Church and the beginning of the Protestant religion. In the days of the Renaissance, the church door was used as a bulletin board for the town by church leaders like Luther. His thesis was a protest, that's where we get the word Protestant. He protested the Roman Catholics teaching that you could pay the church for an indulgence and forgiveness of sins. His thesis pointed to the scriptures that the way to salvation was through faith in Jesus, not through good deeds and pain and indulgence to the church. In 1522, he translated the New Testament into German so the people could read the Bible for themselves, causing a reform from the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestant religion was ignited. October 31st, 2017, the 500 year anniversary of the Reformation, a reliance on the scriptures in Ephesians 2.8, that faith in Jesus Christ is the way to salvation and it is a gift from God. That's good. Isn't that cool? Love that. Come on. Yeah. Love that. Spent a little time researching that, writing that, but um, so yeah, I was like, why redo it? Just air something from five years ago. Was that one of our old We the People segments? It was. That was fun. That was. But so think about that. You used to have to pay the church for a forgiveness of sins. And Rob loves your... history. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I truly do. He's always going to find history out. <laughs> Somewhere. <true. laughs> I'll That's find true. good news from it. So it's we. It's about just, a, well, off, when that was rolling, I did say, when did the devil come in and hijack Halloween? And how did that work? And he didn't know. He just said we don't acknowledge yeah, it. So. Don't yeah, we recognize don't. It. we're not talking about that. No, no we just talk about what I need the history goodness of God is cast doing. Cast them out of here. <laughs> they're gone. They're already cast out. We just keep keep casting them out. Their day has already come. Anyway, tonight, uh, big night World tonight. Series game, game number three. three. So A series tied one one. It's tied yeah. one one. Phillies and the Astros. Astros. So, hey, get on social media. Go on our Facebook page. Just go to ctn.lovelivinglife on Facebook. Tell us what you think. Do you like baseball? Do you not like baseball? We should have done a pre-show in here. We had a little discussion about that. Some people in here are not baseball fans. I'm not going to mention anybody. <clears throat> I'm not. But the he rest is. of us I, love I the game. i got to pick whether I like Philly or Houston better. So. Yeah. I'm a Phillies fan, like and you're going to see why. <laughs> I'm actually a Pirates fan and a Rays fan. But anyway. Right. I'm a Phillies fan because of this. Watch, if you watch this game awesome. one, the superhero of game one is the catcher for the Phillies. He hit the extra inning home run and the city went crazy. Astros were supposed to win it. They came down from what, five runs down and the Phillies ended up winning it. This is the guy that won it. 
Listen to what he said just recently. This is my, uh, this has been my favorite Bible verse my whole life. It's a pretty simple one, but it's just uh, James 4, 7. Uh, so humble yourselves before God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Um, for me, being humble has been something that um, has been really important in my life just because I know that I've gotten to where I've gotten, and I've been able to succeed the way I have in life 1,000% because of what Jesus did for me and um, the gifts that he gave me. You know, I haven't been able to do anything on my own. Um, nothing that I've accomplished is due to me. You know, I, I give all the credit to him, and um, that's been something that, you know, my my sister actually, when I was probably 11 years old, showed me this verse and mm. talked to me about being humble. And this was before I was anything, you know, but she just told me anything you do in life, you know, always stay humble and give credit to God and give God the glory because without him, you know, none of this is possible. So that's something that's always stuck with me and been important to me. That's awesome, man. And as, you know, as someone who sees you kind of behind the scenes, I mean, that really just marks so much of, of all that you do. You know, I mean, you work hard, you play hard, you give it your best, but you're just, you're just a really humble guy. And uh, and that's one of the things I super respect about you. That's probably, it's probably had to be hard, though, as you, I mean, obviously had a lot of success. Like, it's probably hard to, to keep that mindset. What? Yeah. How, how do you, how do you kind of keep that, I keep that, that hard? Uh, good support system. <laughs> uh, you know, I've, I've constantly got people, you know, uh, my family especially, you know, they're jokingly normally, but they're always there to tell me how not good I am. You know, like they're, they keep me humble themselves, but no, just always, it's like I said, you know, I always remember that none of this, like, this isn't me doing any of this on my own. You know, I, I without God, none of this, I wouldn't be doing anything I'm doing. And um, he's given me abilities and blessings that, that I could never have even imagined. And so I'm just always going to be grateful and always going to be humbled knowing that um, he trusted me with those talents and, and he gave me a platform that not many people get. So um, I just I just hope and pray that, that I can make him proud and, and do good with that platform. Yeah. Wow, that's that awesome. A great interview. That really was Go good. Go JT. I yeah. love that. Man. Love that. And if you didn't notice in the graphics, that was the chaplain interviewing him, which I love it. People in sports giving God glory, come on. That's what we're here for. We're yeah, all right. here, born to give God glory. You know what I love about that is there's always more than what you realize. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like when you hear in different aspects of faith and entertainment, God just moving, it really mm -hmm. encourages me because you don't get that side. Right. Yeah. So when people are outspoken, you hear that believers are in these different areas, go God. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, so let's absolutely. go. Continue to pray that God awakens people yes. in sports yes. and Hollywood. We need it so desperately. Really I love that he said God gave him those abilities. Love and his it. family keeps him humble. I thought that was kind of cute, too. Uh, said, it remind me how right. not good I am. In other words, stay humble. Right. And so just so uh, congratulations to him. So, so anyway, now I'm rooting for the Phillies just because of that. So whatever. That know. was it. That's, That's all Rob needed. That's all I needed. One believer and I'm in, man. Yeah. First faith step. <laughs> Got the vote. <laughs> So we have another national day today. No, tomorrow. tomorrow is National Authors Day. Whoa. And we don't like to talk about ourselves, but today we're going to talk about us. Because, <laughs> talk about us. Yeah, we don't um, like talking about ourselves, but we're going to. Rob and I have authored a couple of books, so we're going to feature that, and we're going to feature your book coming up too, which is amazing. So I can't good. wait so until So happy National out. Author Day tomorrow. Yeah, happy Honey National Pastor. Author Day Thank tomorrow, you. Pastor. We wrote a book called Wave Your Fat Goodbye, and it did get one good review, thank goodness. And uh, so I'll read that one and read that one only. But they said, excellent book. It's a Christian and very educational. It's like having a personal trainer in a book. By the way, this book is hilarious too. They fit a lot of humor into a very informational book. This is a blessing. I thank God for his Holy Spirit leading me to purchase this book. That came out in 2013. 17. Yeah, 17. 17? Yeah. yeah. And we could say fat in the title? Yeah. Of course. Wouldn't that trigger people today? It does. Yeah, it does. It does. I mean, <laughs> just funny, whatever. Maybe that's why it, it's not in Amazon's top it. bestseller list. It just is no, what it is. No, it's not. It is what it is, and we but just did it to book. be a blessing. A lot of truths that God gave you yep. to help just people. Did it a lot, to be we a had a lot of fun with it. So. Okay, so now a real book. I have a really. <laughs> no, it, is this book. is well, but anyway, I was so excited about this book when Pastor James started talking about it back in April. I ordered it and I got an email the other day saying that my book is going to be delivered next week. So I'm super Yay. excited. But anyway, the book is called 10 Prophetic Values for Today. Woo! And I believe that everyone should order this. 
So I'm not promoting it. Has, it's not it. out. It's it comes out a, November 6th. Right, you, you see the little link we put in there upper right? That's right. the pre-order. And there's his other books, of course, up there. Revival, Hunger, Fire, and the Devotionals. But this is so, this is so, so good. So this is what the product description says. You were created to know the shepherd's voice and speak his words into the world. This is a pivotal time in the body of Christ. As the world tumbles into darkness, credibility issues have risen within the prophetic movement movement causing believers to be disillusioned frustrated and unsure whom they trust wow. yet god is speaking more clearly than ever before <laughs> Come on. are we willing and able to listen full of hope and practical insights this book brings you back to the basics of how to hear and speak the words of god by digging into 10 biblical prophetic values pastor james levesque shows how cultivating qualities like Pre perseverance, hope, and generosity will help you hear God clearly and accurately and represent Him with integrity. In these unprecedented times, His voice must be our guide and His word must be our lamp. As you follow where He leads, you will speak peace to the enemy's storms and be delight to such a desperate world. Gosh, I think that is, so I mean, that just stirs me. Come on, book, come early. <laughs> come on, book. November 6th. Come early. <laughs> so what, maybe we'll feature it in a couple of weeks. We need to do something yeah, for I our would viewers, love to. for yeah. sure. Yeah, that would you be You know, great. coming out of, you know, obviously we're so prophetic as a people and coming mm -hmm. out of the elections and a lot of the craziness that happened with mm -hmm. the prophetic movement, God gave me a promise and he said, I'm going to restore my voice on the earth. And on. that didn't mean he stopped speaking. That meant we have listening problems. But the Lord encouraged my heart that we were so going to be true. able to hear his voice. Look, we need prophetic ministry more than ever before. Mm -hmm. We need to hear God's voice, discern God's voice. And so God really visited me and gave me these, these principles that I believe are going to help our lives to hear. I'm, so, I want to hear all 10 of them, but we don't have time to. I know. Today. Come on. That's <laughs> another time. I'm ready to we'll jump in. Why don't we just do a, sh a show yeah. on the book? We'll just, we'll we'll just feature it. the book in a couple of weeks. We'll go through, can we, do we have, will, will we have time in half an hour to go through all 10 principles? Yeah, we're going to do something. Uh, part one, part two? <laughs> or at least make some available for the listener or the viewers. There you so go. Yeah, awesome. yeah. There you go. Maybe we'll have a special offer for you guys, so stay tuned for that. Another so good. good news story. That's I, all we want to bring you is good news. You can find good, bad news on every other station true. out there. We're bringing you good news. It's so true. I mean, there are so many things to focus on, but to focus on the goodness of God and what he's doing and how he's using his people so that, you know, people, they want to talk about bad. We don't want to. We want to encourage you today to look for God's goodness. Yes. And this was a story that I found. I just loved it. I thought it was amazing. Um, it's about a public high school football coach in Washington State who famously lost his job for leading prayers on the field after mm. games. Um, and he will be reinstated by spring of next year. Whoa. The court mm -hmm. document shows that that is going to happen. The United States Supreme Court sided with Kennedy in June when justice ruled six to three that the coach was protected by the Constitution when he knelt and prayed aloud at the 50 yard line post game, sometimes with his players. I think that's awesome. And this is the right everybody should have. So he, his rights being restored for that. I Beautiful. think that's awesome. Being I love reinstated. It. I love that. Isn't that fantastic? It's like, so. Today's like prayer and sports up. theme. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Love yeah, it. Thank you That's for that. Awesome. Thank you, Supreme Court, six to three. Who would have ever thought that? So That's beautiful. There's great news out there. You just sometimes you have to dig a little Absolutely. deeper to try to find it. So that's why we bring it to you. Hey, we love to go to our Facebook page. It is on ctn.lovelivinglife. There you go. Facebook.com forward slash ctn.lovelivinglife. That's a mouthful. But anyway, that's how to find us. Go to Facebook. We are live. If you're watching us Monday afternoon, we're live every Monday at 1230. You can join us from anywhere in the world on Facebook and to leave your comments, ask us questions, and after the show, we'll go through those and return those. But we got some feedback recently from a precious, precious viewer, and uh, her name was Phyllis, and here is what she had to say. She said, I love your show. My husband, Dr. Green, and I lived in Nokomis since 1997. Doug is in heaven now, and I live in Sarasota. When I was in, in Nokomis, you introduced me to the app witch. Mm. I was so happy that I shared it with my friends. God bless you, Phyllis. 
So we kind of dug into the archives. This was Again. part of the Christian what? Fitness show. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is definitely an archive because it's part of Christian Fitness. You're yes. talking about, you're talking about the length of Lori's hair. That's how we judge, like, what year <laughs> things took place. Well, I mean, if you go to our website, ChristianFitnessTV.com. Well, and, and how amazing that whatever this is had such an impact on somebody that they, that they bring it back up many years later. Yeah, so anyway, incredible. watch this. It's fun. The app witch. <laughs> Live a healthy life, presented by Christian Fitness. For today's healthy life tip, we're going to cut down on your carbs. A great way to do that is to reduce the amount of bread you eat. So we're going to show you an app witch. Have you ever heard of it? Probably not, because we <laughs> made that name up. An app witch is a mini sandwich using apple instead of bread. So it's an apple as a sandwich, which makes it an app witch. Whether the name's ridiculous or clever, it is delicious. Today we're using almond butter and putting it between two slices of apple. It's a great mini snack, or it can be a part of a meal. So ditch the dough and make yourself an almond butter apple sandwich and appwich. Quick, easy, and delicious. Try it. Might just love it. This healthy life tip was brought to you by the Christian Television Network. Okay, so we had a discussion while Why you guys were watching this? this. So really, I mean, I did. I went shopping and looked for the biggest. <laughs> that was Clearly, it big. was <laughs> massive. <laughs> but I mean, it's great. So, or those and, are the apples in our grocery store. You could have a little oh, mini apple, which, like a little slider. Yeah, I mean, like, be appetizers. That was the biggest apple I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, you just holding it like this. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some for the kids. So, apple which yeah. I'm in. Did you core it first? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So you core it. You take an apple, you core it. And by the way, you can take, I think we called it a, tur a churk apple. So it's turkey, <laughs> apple, slice. And cheese. And cheese. So you can have that. You can have the apple which, which <laughs> is not buying apple. It anyway. I don't know. <laughs> How did you core it sideways? Now we cut it. You cut it sideways. No, 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 you you can, sideways. They make apple and the little core. apple core. Yeah, or you can you just dig it out with like a knife. A slice. Yeah, you core it first no, and then you slice it. Splits it. No, 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 right. no, 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 they have, they have a drill, a drill later. core where you can actually core the middle and leave the apple intact. I'll show you. I I show you. Why didn't we just bring one and make one today? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, you just... know what, let's do this. Next week. A little trickery, I want to try it. Next week's show, we're going to make either the chirk apple or the apple. Look, see, on one side show. isn't oh. cored. This yes, it is. Can we, no. <laughs> We're just going, this is David Copperfield. This thing's not cored. Yes, it is. There's peanut butter squishing yeah. through the hole. Okay. Or apple album better anyway we're making one next week we are, oh, i want uh, to see this thing in real life we are making plus it. i love apples yeah, Phyllis, we know you love from apples. the comus now in sarasota thank you for thank that you. by the way that was we're amazing. making one next week yeah, so that really was what a amazing. great memory i wonder how many <laughs> apple witches she's made uh, what she said she shared with she her friends found. we make them i love them i mean i try to eliminate bread every minute that i can yeah. so you know it was just a fun way love of it all right apples and cheese just no it doesn't oh that is cord <laughs> Man, the yes. bottom is cored out. It is. I repent in front of the world. <laughs> All right, I take it back. So like that quick, easy, and simple graphic. It's really actually not that quick and easy, but we'll, we'll find out next week how quick, easy, and simple quick, it is. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> That's like an infomercial. We gotta Wait, try. But there's it, more. We should. We will do it Start next week. Selling apple cores on this right. place. Um, devotional. Today. So let's yes. get serious about today. Reformation Day. Off, awesome, awesome, October awesome. 31, you can always follow along in our devotional, Engage Heaven Today. And uh, we just read them along every, every Monday live. Today is October 31st. And we're talking about bringing change. Bringing change. Our scripture is found in, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. It says, Beloved children, our love can't be an abstract theory that we only talk about, but a way of life demonstrated through loving deeds. I'm going to put these on for this. How awake are you to the Lord? Are you filled with wisdom? Are you reading the scripture? Are you worshiping? The first time the word Christians actually used in the Bible was in the book of Acts as a description to a group of people that were clearly following Christ's teaching. That's what it meant to be a Christian. Today, the term Christian is self-imposed and almost an identification label. We all have excuses for why we haven't experienced change. Everybody has a list of what they've gone through. We've all been hurt. We've all been betrayed. But because we have to stop blaming each other, we need to if we're going to actually heal. If you really want change, fall in love with Jesus and love other people until they're healed. 
Bring change by speaking the gospel fiercely and uncompromisingly. Pray for miracles with confidence and persistence. Constantly declare peace and love until change happens. Make sure your life lines up with scripture so that you don't even have to tell people you're a Christian. They'll just know. Come on. So true. That's, that's incredible. Just, that's really good. You know, one thing I noticed, especially with the younger generation, is they, you know, I think awareness is so important. I really do. Everybody wants to bring awareness. Mm -hmm. The good news about awareness is we know about things that we didn't even knew existed, right? Sure. We're learning about diseases and all these things and things to watch out for. And bread, there was a day that was the only <laughs> staple of a meal, right? Mm -hmm. Awareness has brought us to a place. Mm -hmm. Awareness alone isn't okay. Right. We have to get to a point where change is what we're actually after. Right. Because I see a lot of people that they, they're marching their <laughs> lives to bring awareness of something. But if we're not actually bringing the solution, which is Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. then has change really happened? Yeah. Jesus said, I want you to pray. And, and, you know, and he said, you move mountains and anything you ask, I'll give to you. But there's what he said. So your joy would be complete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our joy is not complete until prayers answered. Wow. You know what right. I mean? Like we can't so find true. a re dead religion finds joy in dead routine. Mm -hmm. So for instance, I would find my joy in the, 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 the routine of prayer, not the answered prayer. Are you wow. catching that or is got that it, too crazy? That's no, good. no, no, I get and it. And so wow. I just think we're called to bring change on this earth, not just talk about it, but to live it. So whatever your beliefs are, you know, talk. Years ago, we could close a property on a handshake. Mm -hmm. Now, our words don't mean nothing. I, I bought a few homes recently. Every time you move and buy another home, the, the, you know, a stack of papers is <laughs> a mile long because more people don't trust each other, more, yep. you know, you know, discrepancies. And, and so what happens when words need to matter? Our actions have to back up the words. So true, so really true. Good. You know, you were talking about, well, love is an action word. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and to understand that, I've said this so many times, so I'm gonna do today what I say I do. Um, when we do the devotion, I actually read both Pastor James, this one and the women's devotion. You do. But today <laughs> I wanted to do something else along with it because I always say I read the Bible along with his devotion and I do that. I will go and find the scripture that he is expounding on and then I want to read. Mm -hmm. Well, what else? Because this is God's instruction. So he read um, first John 3, 18. I'm going to read 19 through until I stop. We know that the truth lives within us because we demonstrate love in action. So that was not me saying that. That came from the That's Bible. Um, which will reassure our hearts in his presence. Whenever our hearts make us feel guilty and remind us of our failures, we know that God is much greater and more merciful than our conscience. Mm -hmm. And he knows everything there is to know about us. My delightfully loved friends. When our hearts don't condemn us, we have a bold freedom to speak face to face with God. And whatever we ask of him, we receive because we keep his commands. And by our beautiful intentions, we continue to do what brings pleasure to him. So these are the commands that we continually place our trust in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and that we keep loving one another just as he commanded us. So. I, I think it's important when you get a devotion, take the word. I mean, I read forever this morning and that's just how I work. I get my joy filled by oh, yeah. receiving mm -hmm. Jesus Love and it. knowing mm -hmm. what's happened in my life and the change that he brought about me. But at the same time, I get refilled every time I read the word. This is who I am. And this is what renews your mind so that you aren't thinking about maybe something that someone said or whatever it is. Walk in the fullness of God by walking in his love, his forgiveness, his mercy, and ask him, what does he say about you? It's right there. Yes, so good. I love, Pastor, you said awareness. People want to bring awareness to things and there's so much crazy out there. People yeah. destroying, you know, precious artworks and oh, things like that to try to Crazy. draw awareness. Awareness to what? You know, let's sit at a table, bring awareness that way. Everyone has a microphone through, you know, the internet these days. You can have your own, you know, podcast and bring awareness to your, without destroying other things and being negative on it. And is that what we do in the church? Right. Later on, you talked about we need to be fall in love with Jesus first and then look at others in the loving way that he sees them and then see them healed. In other words, don't, don't look where they are right now. Look at them the way Jesus sees them. He wouldn't have chosen a single disciple 
<laughs> he would have walked up and said, oh, man, right. I know what Peter is like. I am not picking him. I am not having Judas. I am not having, you know, no, he wouldn't. He'd been by himself. But what did he do? He looked him through the eyes of you call the glasses of love. So yeah. he looked yeah, at the disciples and said, man, glasses. I can. I know what Peter's going to do. Mm -hmm. I know that he's going to preach on the day of Acts and thousands are going to be saved. I know that, yes, he's, he's a little rough around the edges. But, man, that boldness is going to carry him forward when he's filled with the Holy Spirit. So Jesus was able to see them with his eyes of love and man that's a that's what i pulled from what you were talking about today that's yeah. what we've got to do we've got to look at people with those eyes of love and say look you know man i can't Im if i look at anybody as a christian like you said the baseball player i don't know if he's saved or not but i'm going to treat him like he's saved or i'm going to treat people exactly the way right. jesus sees them and treat them as if they're saved i'm going to pray for them jesus said pray for your enemies he didn't say curse them and hope that they're dead and you get struck by lightning and all these things he said pray for your enemies and so anyway, that's what I got out of that. We've got to do, we've got to just, we got to love more. It's that yeah. simple. And you know, you mentioned the disciples, Peter. There were all different characters that Jesus prayed for these people to come. But you know what they didn't do? They didn't um, argue about their differences as far as diversity. Peter had a personality. Mm -hmm. Maybe Luke had a different one, vice versa. We have to celebrate that we're all differently made. So God's true. given all of us gifting. And if if I want you to be like me, we have, there's a problem. And, if, and if, if me serving God is to be like you, there's a problem. We have to tap into how God's wired so us, Perfect. that we so see true. the world so we can be a change to it. Beautiful. You know, people come in the church, I've been pastoring over 25 years, and you know, I always say, look, God's gonna call you to what you can't stand. David, these uncircumcised Philistines, who do they think they are? Look, if you're in the church and you're so complaining about how the chairs are out of place, <laughs> Maybe you're the one that come and make a change <laughs> right. and not just bring awareness to the problems that you see. Yeah. So and I feel like we all have giftings and, and we really thrive. You know, one puts 1,000, two puts 10,000. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if we can all tap into the appreciation of how we look at life differently, it's gonna be a lot less division yeah, out there. Absolutely. Love sees good. God's good. He yes. loves you and he sees you as good. And if we look through the eyes of God, we're going to see the goodness of God. Yes, we will. And you you find what you look for. So look for good. Mm -hmm. Look for God's love. And then be that extension of that to others too. Now so like you said, they'll know you they'll know you're a Christian by, just by your actions. Mm -hmm. You don't have to open your word. You don't have to say right. a thing. They'll know they'll mm -hmm. know it by your actions. It is an action word. So man, just a great, great but word. In, for and today. in a world, everybody's full of words, right? And right. The words aren't meaning as much. Twitter right. and the internet. Yeah. We got to be submitted to the Lord for real yeah. change. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good word, man. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Reformation Pastor. Day. Reformation Day. <laughs> Go research that a little bit more. That's that's powerful. So anyway, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you had fun. We hope you learned a little bit. We focused on the good news, especially the good news of the word. And we always pray for you, and we pray through the Bible, and that's 3 John 1, 2. It is beloved. I pray, and we pray, that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you guys. God bless Have you guys. Have a great week. We love you. Come on. It's going to be an awesome week.